Hello everybody, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about beer and food, or beer pairings, but I like to think of it as beer and food. <clears throat> I also like to think of it as beer as food. There is a reason why beer is called liquid bread. Uh, and in general, if you have a high quality craft beer, it has very many nutrients. Not necessarily that you can survive on, I would not recommend that, but beer, high quality beer, high quality craft beer is very rich in nutrients. Uh, there is a reason why it's called liquid bread. Um, and it's much better uh, thinking of it as a food product rather than just a beverage. Uh, because unlike water, unlike soda, it has so many aroma and flavor characteristics that can interact and complement and pair with food and, and other things extremely well uh, to really elevate your experience. Uh, either your experience with just the beverage or your experience with the food and your overall experience uh, as a whole. So like I said, this complex interaction is there more than just a thirst quencher. Unless you're looking for barley seltzer you know, some of those mass, mass products produced out there that have barely any flavor and are designed to be served at temperatures of 31 degrees. That is a thirst quencher. Yeah, whatever. Um, you know, like I said, there's a, there's a reason why good beer is known as liquid bread. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say a, a barley seltzer is really liquid bread. So, beer and food interactions from the author, uh, Mr. Mosher, Randy. He, he listed a few things, and I really thought it was good for us to build upon this. Uh, so the first interaction is resonance. So it's an interaction based on an aromatic similarity from shared aroma molecules or aromas in the same general family. So those are going to be beers and foods that have very similar smells. Um, bread. You get you get freshly baked bread. You've got the if it's if it's yeast bread, you're going to have that that yeast smell. The, the toasty crust and just the, the rich, rich flour and, and wheat smells and flavors that you're getting. A lot of beers can smell just like that. A wheat beer, say like a Hefeweizen, going to smell very similar to that. You're going to get that yeast. You're going to get that, that toasted wheat a little bit as well. Uh, so things are just kind of resonant. They really bounce off each other really well. Now, affinity. Familiarity based on cuisine experiences from life, prone to personal and cultural bias. So, the idea there is not everybody is familiar with all the flavors available. Um, you and I may not be necessarily familiar with curry. Uh, I've had a little bit of curry, but it's not a, a flavor profile that is very widely spread here in the States. Now, that also means some other people are going to have very different experiences with our beers than we will. Uh, which brings up a very interesting cultural, uh, it might even just be regional thing. You know, where I'm from in St. Louis originally, there was a very diverse population. And products would probably appeal to, to some groups more than some others. And it's very interesting. Uh, and also, cultural bias prone, there are certain flavors that maybe some cultures are just averse to. Like, I'm not used to that flavor, I don't want that. That's also something to be aware of as far as uh, thinking of pairing beers with foods. Synthesis. So an affinity between flavors that creates a third flavor. Uh, so you think about a beer in combination with a food product. The, the combination, you take a bite, you take a drink, and it's like fireworks going off, and there's just, it's like this scene from Ratatouille, if anybody has kids and has seen that movie recently, and it's just that wonderful scene that there are totally new flavors created just by these interactions between this food and this beer. Um, wouldn't necessarily have come anywhere near if you would have had the, each one separately. So that is... Synthesis. You think about it, your synthesis means creating. So you're you're creating 
that new flavor just by the combination of those two products. Overwhelm, one flavor so strong it largely obscures the other. You think about you're having some very lightly flavored fish and you're drinking a 17% bourbon barrel aged imperial stout, you're probably not going to taste the fish very well. Or again, you're eating a light flavored fish and I don't know if anybody has had stone ruination, the ridiculously bitter IPA. Uh, you don't really taste much of anything after drinking one of those beers, so it is extremely overwhelming on your palate. Hard to pair something with that. Balancing. Uh, when two strong flavors combine and nearly vanish. So the, the prime example of balancing would be the combination of sweetness and bitterness. The right ratio of those two make you completely forget either one, make you completely forget both. And they, they develop this perfect, I uh, use the word balance, it's not supposed to use the, the word in its definition, but it creates this perfect balance of flavor to where it just disappears. You're not necessarily creating a new flavor, but they're so well in balance that it's just the definition of smooth. So when you've got that nice balance, you don't really notice either one. You don't really notice that it's sweet. You don't really notice that it's bitter. We've got cleansing. Um, that's going to be mainly due to uh, CO2 scrubbing. The bubbling action can really cleanse your palate with a, a spritzy beer or a spritzy seltzer or something like that. Also, um, with fatty, fatty flavors or like uh, spicy flavors, the alcohol itself can help dissolve that flavor off of your tongue. So it can help cleanse your palate as well, uh, which might not necessarily be a good thing. You know, if you're wanting to have some of those flavors linger around, and you take a drink and it's gone right after that drink, uh, may not necessarily be something that you were looking for or expecting. So like like canceling. So the idea of adding uh, sweet to a sweet isn't necessarily additive, uh, especially due to the physical limitation of our ability to sense. Like there is an upper limit of what we can sense and what we can taste. Um, if you just keep throwing sweet on sweet, even something that's not necessarily a sugar, but something that our body perceives as sweet, uh, some spices can be perceived as sweet, it, it's going to get lost in the mix. You, know, you, you really want to go back to that balancing. And you don't want to really go too nuts with same similar flavors like that. Uh, aggravating. One element of a pair amplifies or alters the character of another in an unpleasant way. Uh, the example that he uses in the book, and it's a, it's a very important example, is uh, capsaicin. So anything spicy, uh, you hit that with some bitterness and it's not going away. You know, maybe IPAs are not the best thing to pair with a super hot hot sauce. Enhancing. One flavor increases the perceived intensity of one or more components of the other. So what this does, and, and I almost would call like uh, elevating, and I think I've used kind of the example before when I talked about Maris Otter, and I know it's not necessarily beer and food, but uh, Maris Otter is almost like I said a, a malt, malt multiplier. It enhances all of the other multi flavors that are in the rest of the recipe, and it really just elevates the, the beer above what it was previously. Uh, and then soothing, reducing heat or irritation is usually due to capsaicin or chili heat. Uh, obviously, that's you're gonna pair a little bit of multi sweetness with a with a spice, and it's really gonna make a big difference. Uh, milk stout also the lactose does a really good job at counteracting that particular capsaicin irritation. So the pairing guidelines that the, the author recommends, uh, matching intensities, uh, try not to allow one to override the other, so it kind of goes along with the line of the, his interaction of overwhelming. Uh, if you're wanting to have a beer 
pairing. You're wanting to showcase both the food and the beer. You don't want to pick food or beers that are going to just absolutely cancel each other out. That's kind of antithesis of what we were trying to do. Unless you really don't like the people you've invited to dinner. That's up to you. Uh, find harmonies. So we're looking for similar aromatics. And then consider contrasting elements. Uh, sometimes opposites can attract and it depends really on what you're wanting to accentuate. So if you're wanting that capsaicin, you make a, a spicy curry and you really want that to linger. Uh, maybe you do pair it with something a little hoppy, a little bitter. A little hoppier, a little bitter. Uh, maybe on the more bitter side. Uh, really let that burn linger. So, on the flip side, I always like to, to try to, to talk about things that maybe aren't as complicated. Maybe we're just overthinking all of this and it just it doesn't have to be that difficult. Uh, it doesn't have to be unnecessarily complicated. Uh, pair whatever you like to eat with whatever beer you like to drink. Just know that if you may not have the best pairing, uh, your overall experience may not be the greatest. But what is that greatest? It's all subjective. So it, it really could be you're enjoying the food, you're enjoying the beer, and the, the process of enjoying both of them elevates everything else. And really, it may not matter at that point. So, uh, some of my personal favorite pairings is a, a nice Bohemian Pilsner with pistachios. Everybody likes to talk about like peanuts and things like that. No, no, no. Forget the peanuts. Go out and get some pistachios. Uh, shelled saves time fiddle around with the, the little shells, but uh, pistachios themselves, in my opinion, have a very similar flavor profile as the malt showcase of a Bohemian Pilsner, unless you get a flavored pistachio. I'd probably just recommend salted. Uh, chicken street tacos topped with cilantro and onion and a hefeweizen. So like the, the esters and the phenols and a hefeweizen pair really well with the cilantro and onion. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure if it's to the level of synthesis, but they are definitely uh, similar aromatics. That's for sure. And of course, spicy Mexican food with a Mexican amber lager. So basically like a, maybe a little darker Vienna lager. That maltiness really balances out that spiciness. Uh, and for those of you that will eventually work in a brewery or already do work in a brewery. Uh, nut roll, if you use BSG, you, you should be familiar with the nut rolls that they send. There is a cinnamon churro variant of the nut roll. And you combine that with an oatmeal stout, it pops. It is wonderful. Uh, that oatmeal balances that cinnamon heat because somehow they've got that cinnamon in there has got some heat to it. And it's just delicious combined with the, the, the sugar interior of the nut roll. And the oatmeal stout, can't get much better than that, at least as far as like candy and beer pairing in my opinion. So, alright, thank you.